Hi there. We've asked Matt Gibson to join us today because of our focus in this webinar on fitness and nutrition. Matt is a founding member of the Under 60s Club and I think has developed a, a small obsession with running, which I hope he's going to tell us all about. So welcome, Matt. Thank you for joining us and thank you for all of your support and positive attitude in the under 60s club. Nora, it's great to be here. Thanks. Thanks for that. And um, uh, glad to be having be able to help out in a small way. So uh, I was diagnosed uh, in February 2017, completely out of the blue. Um, I'd never never heard of CLL um, uh, at the moment. You know, the doctor said, well, this is what you've got. Um, I had uh, treatment with FCR in the same year. It's six cycles between uh, April and October of 2017. That went, you know, generally very well. Uh, and um, since that time, I've, you know, returned to work full time as a teacher. So, Matt, what was your route into running? How did you start? Where I live in Essex, um, my town had just started a park run um, that I could walk to uh, as opposed to drive to the next nearest one, which is sort of seven or eight miles away. And uh, so that was that's a really was a really neat way into a, a, a I don't know how this is going to go type um, environment. My local park run gets about a hundred people a week attending. Um, it's an organised five k uh, run, jog, walk, stroll, if you like, around the park. Um, the the sort of the spread of ability is extreme, and um, uh, for for people who are looking to a way into organized activity that they can put in their calendar but under absolutely no stress about how they're going to do I'd really recommend it. So was fitness and running a big part of your life before you got CLL? I would have said I was a pretty fit person I've always been uh, somebody who played team sports walked a bit um, I'm a bit obsessed with cricket uh, and still play every week in the summer um, but running was something I did not enjoy doing uh, it's a uh, so yeah, I always did it on my own. It's solid. It's solitary. Um, but I, I've come to sort of reconcile myself to that being a good thing, actually. I, I, it's interesting about the solitariness of it, which is a good idea during this COVID time. It kept, it, it kept me yeah. sane. This um, it absolutely kept me sane in the early part of last year. Um, I saw my doctor on March the 20th last year. That's the last time I actually saw him. Uh, and he said to me, go home and stay there. Uh, you know, it was just when it was all, you know, a whole ramping up thing that was happening and Boris was doing what he was doing. But um, uh, he said, go home and stay there. And so I did. And uh, I would sneak out effectively at five o'clock in the morning when there was nobody else around to run three times a week, because otherwise I would have gone stir crazy. I was working at home. I was teaching children who were all at home as well. But, um, you know, to get out of the house, uh, running gave me that sort of excuse um and so we, I think I'd have, I'd have really struggled last spring and early summer particularly if I hadn't been doing it it sort of rings a bell with me I'm not a runner but a walker you know getting out of the house to go for a walk I think a lot of people with CLL discovered walking so you feel good you feel well and healthy after your FCR FCR was hard FCR was really tough um at times you know it just makes you feel rubbish but uh, you, you've highlighted you've highlighted in your introduction something about me that a number of people have commented on, you know, about my positivity. You know, you know, I, I don't like dwelling on negative things fund, fundamentally. And so, um, you know, FCR was a means to an end. Get to the end. Right. What's next? And it was interesting. An email from Sarah, Sarah Tobin, the CLL administrator. She emailed. I think I was in I was in Italy, actually, February 2018. And an email dropped into my inbox and said, we're looking for runners for the London 10K in July. And I said, right, I'm going to do that. I can, you know, I can get to that. Uh, I'm going to do that. And then, and then and the rest, if you say, in terms of the running, is history. Because, you know, you think, well, well, if I can do 10K, I can do 15. And if I can do 15, I can do 20. And, you know, and, and you, know you, you go on from there. Um, I guess, even though it's a solitary thing for me, the, the competitive bit of me is still ticking away in the background going, well, I can run faster than that. I, can I think that's a really good thought that if I could walk around the block I could walk around the block 10 times or you know yeah like each of us in our own way can Indeed. do a little bit more than we think we can and and then you start to feel good after you've done that exercise I mean it's great when it 
Oh, the the, the 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 endorphins are just fabulous. I've been I mean I've been this morning. I ran eight miles this morning. I mean I now feel more energized than I was before I went because of the way the way those hormones work. I think whatever whatever your entry point to this is, whether you're going to walk a mile or run three or four kilometers or whatever it is, uh, you will always feel good about doing it. You know, there's you, you, I've never you know there is a bit of a cliche, but I've never felt bad about going for a run once it's over. Motivating yourself to go sometimes is quite hard, but once you've done it, you feel you, you know, it makes you feel really good. That is a really good point, Matt. Yeah, it's hard to get going, but once it's done, of course. And then you start finding opportunities to do it. So I'm looking at my week ahead, thinking, how am I going to get things in? Uh, looking at, I've got on uh, on Wednesday, I've got an event at school in the evening. Uh, and uh, on Friday, we've got something to do with family. So how am I going to get my runs in this week? And so like Wednesday, uh, my school event doesn't start till six. We finish at 3.10. So I'm going to use the school gym to get my run in between one event and the other. I was going to remember to take my kit. But, you know, rather than, you know, sitting around, you know, wasting time, I'm going to try and squeeze it in there because because that, because I can. And, I, you know, it's, as I say, it's become a bit of an obsession, really. You know, if I put the uh, go for a walk in my calendar, uh, oh, then I get the reminder. And it's like, yes, yeah, it's, it's, you know, that's an important thing to do that can be scheduled in. Yeah, yeah, to- 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 yeah, totally, totally. If you make it part of whatever, you know, and, and you, you, know, you don't always have to do as long as you might like to do, but just doing something is, is, is hugely positive. What about your, um, your nutrition? You know, before CLL, after CLL, now? I'm really lucky in that uh, I must have a reason behind metabolism because I am the same weight now at 49 as I was when I was 18. <laughs> um, and uh, I, you know, I, I eat healthily. You know, I, you know, I'm a, you know, I must eat fruit and veg every day, that kind of stuff. But I don't, I'm not obsessive about it. If somebody says, should we go out for, you know, whatever, then the answer is nearly always yes. Um, do you want to talk to us any, any about COVID and your job and your life and how have you, how are you doing? Work have been amazing. I mean, work were amazing when I was having my treatment in 2017. Work were amazing when and I'd finished and I said I wanted to change my role because I was a deputy head. And I said, Look, I want to start this slightly stressful role, less stressful role in school. They were great about that. Uh, and during the whole pandemic, they've been great. You know, when the advice was to shield, they unquestioningly said, well, that's what you need to do. So I didn't go to work between March and July last year. I didn't go to work in November and I didn't go to work between January and the middle of April this year until I had my second jab. The first, the first time you return after an invite, you think, well, there's all, this, so there's all these people around, then that's, then that's tricky. I've been lucky where I work in South Suffolk has been a relatively low uh, COVID area. Um, and this term, when we've returned with effectively no restrictions, we've never had more than 1% of our very large school off with COVID. So um, I was 1,600 kids in my school. And, you know, yesterday when I looked, there are 14 off with COVID. So, um, you know, the rates are very low. And uh, essentially, probably around, around September time this year, I just said, right, it's, this is the new normal. Um, and it's it's not quite what it was before, um, but this is the new normal. So uh, most of the restrictions have gone in school. Um, the children are still wearing masks in corridors and communal spaces, but um, and they're hand sanitising on the entrance to every room. But other than that, things are normal. Clubs are happening, sports happening, kids are moving around the building, um, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing for them. It's a good thing for them. It's so important and it's so noticeable the impact it's had on some children all that time at home. Um, and I guess if that bit of my life is normal, then then I've had to accept that the rest of my life is normal. So um, uh, while I know this wouldn't be for everybody, you know, I went to the pub last night uh, and, um, and and that's a relatively regular thing. Uh, I stayed in a hotel last week. It was half term. Uh, uh, and, you know, without being silly about it and, and, and also without knowing whether the vaccines have worked, I'm now triple jabbed. I've just accepted that this is what this is what life is at the moment. I know not everybody's that's not for everybody. But for me and, you know, going back to that sort of positive mindset, I've you know just decided to crack on, basically. It's it helps your frame of mind if you can 
sort of be normal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. I mean, there's something, sort of, you know, I could have gone abroad last week, um, but I decided I wasn't ready for an airport or an aeroplane. Um, now, that, that perhaps is a bit illogical, really, given that I sat on a train from, from London to Bath um, and, uh, you know, stayed in a hotel where you know, anybody could have been. But I wasn't, you know, that's just a, it's just like, you know, I guess the, the metal box thing and sitting right next to a stranger as opposed to being able to choose where you sit. But, um, who, who, you know, who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah. You know, everybody at home is double jammed. The, my boys are away at university and doing Lord knows what. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it, yeah, it's just about, about getting on with it, I think, really. That's great. It's it's inspiring to to hear you live your normal life, live your best life and uh, and doing and keeping on with the running, doing the running. That's great for your mental state. Good luck. Keep on. Mm-hmm. And I hope you get into the London Marathon next year. And uh, thank you for sharing your stories about CLL, FCR and running fitness. Thanks, Matt. You're welcome, Nora. It's been great. Thanks very much.